Yeah. Because what's happening here is, can you guys hear me okay as well? Do I hear, do I sound echoey or anything? Uh, it sounds good. For people, I'm in like a weird closet thing in a co-working space. So uh, just check it. Okay, so here we are, we're in students, right? We have the students, um, the students variable. And what it is, is it's a list, right? And so in this list, we want to target what value. So we're so, iterating through students. Uh -huh. So it would be, sorry. So it would be, okay, I know what it is. So I'm trying to get my colors perfect. Okay. So we have a bunch of iterators. We have I, we have X, and we have J. I is our position. I'm just gonna say post. So position of my list, right? So where I'm at. Then X here is my key and J is my value, right? So what we're doing here is we're trying to iterate through and say, my name is, and what we're wanting to do is find the position in my list of this first thing, because that's where we're iterating through, right? So what is my position variable iterator? So it should be student I. Yeah. Then X on the side to. Yeah, so then it should be something like this, I, X. So this is saying at the position of students, I want you to target the key. So let's try this. Let's save it. Yep, and now run it. Hmm. Now what does this say? Um, List indices must be. I think because this is just taking the value right away. Oh, this is, yeah, so this is. If I like, X. if I say like range, probably that would target the index of the student in there. What do you think? So what it's saying, what's the error saying? I think that's what's important to look at. Least is indices that? must be integer or slice, not dictionary. So Okay, so then, so it's saying what? I'm sorry, I, I have one screen open. Okay, so it's saying list indices must be integers or slices, not dictionary. Okay, so we're wanting to iterate through a dictionary. Okay, for I in students, I is just the value there and I items. So what is the one thing that's giving us the air? What, what's the line? Line 19, print. Oh, we wouldn't. I mean, this whole it function, it just to return like first name and last name at sure. the same time. Mm -hmm which it does without trying to access like uh, the indexes. So, cause I think like you just going through the dictionary, just pick uh, like X, which is like you say X, which is the, uh, the key and mm -hmm. J as the value. Like, let's see, let's try this, like for example. Do you need the second loop instead of just doing like I and then calling out the key? I'm kind of with you there. So uh, the second are you, one. But sorry. Are you wanting to iterate? I guess what you're trying to do is you're trying to iterate through the keys. So you're iterating through the values, but you just want the first key, right? So uh that's that was my second question but the first question was i wanted to have like my first name and last name on the same line okay like so you're printing here. x 
in the value. So what it's doing is it's iterating through this. And the first thing it's doing is X and it's printing X and J, then it's going on to the next one and it's printing X and J, right? Because that's mm -hmm. my first key, my second key. Okay. That makes sense. So what is your, what are you wanting to do? You're wanting to put it on the- Same line. Oh, the same line. So, okay. Yeah, so going on a new line. And this is intermediate. Is this functions intermediate too? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. Give me one second. I'm just reading on this and trying to figure out why I know who wrote the solution, but why they did it this way. And they say, we're trying to do some power moves here, but they made it very complicated. So we can get X. So what we can do is we could add X. So, so what we could do is we could have something like this, where we have in my for loop, you have a, you know, display str. I know you guys can't see anything, but I'll, I'll show in just a second. That can just be empty. And then what I can do is so something like this. Great, that shouldn't have empty. And then you could add J to that. Okay, Rick, let's see what you did. So Rick said for I in list, temporary string, that's exactly what I was saying, creating a temporary string and then saying for I in, you add temporary string plus the key, I of key. Rick, do you wanna explain what you did? Uh, yeah, so my I did uh, this function it's gonna no, go no. through. I'm sorry, Rick. Rick, oh, Rick? Is the one. Yeah. Okay. Because he he put he put something in the chat. So. I... Uh, let's see. Yeah. yeah so ahead. I just iterated through the loop, um, or the list. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Made an empty temp string like you're talking about, just a placeholder. Yeah. And then um, I looped through the keys in the dictionary. And. Mm -hmm. Um, just depend. So I get the empty temp string plus the key plus an arrow that's pointing to the, the next one uh, plus the value. And then I just print uh, the string up to like the last two characters because there's like a, there's a, to get rid of the comma and the white space at the end. Sure. Okay. And that showed the first and last name, right? Yeah, on a single line. So it'll say, yeah. um, Where's my output? It says first name arrow Michael, comma last name arrow Jordan. Yeah. And then the next line will be the first name arrow John, comma last name Ros uh, arrow Roslyn. Next line, etc. Could you have used an F string there? Uh, yeah, I could have done that, but it, um, yeah, where you just had E and then I of key. Yeah. Right, and then done it all in one line, then you wouldn't even have to use the slice operator towards the end. Oh, uh, yeah, true, yeah. And then just print a temp string. Okay, do you see what he's saying, Frank? Do you see that code in chat? And then John had, yeah, John kind of did the same thing. I uh, just, uh, the one with a temp, that's the one I tried to get a little bit 
what is yeah so why don't you why don't you copy that and then we'll kind of walk through that so copy that put that in your code so just uh comment out your function and then we'll walk through his code works code yeah Yep, you're gonna need to move that all the way over. Perfect, <clears throat> that's fine. So what we're doing here, let me make my screen a little bit bigger. Oops, I made the screen. I guess I can't say. Fascinating. Okay. Sorry, I'm still messing with my, I'm usually not a, usually I have multiple screens. This is my first time. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are iterating through our list, right? We, we have this function, this method that takes in uh, some sort of list, pull, we're calling that in list. And then what we're doing is we're iterating through every single piece, right? So we're going to iterate here to here to here to here, which you had. So great job. But then what we're doing is we're actually creating this temporary string. This temporary string is this is if we want them to be on the same line, we need to create this temporary string just so just so that way we have um, you know a way that we can add that all together. But I, I guess I'm curious. I wonder if we could refactor and not even have that, but we'll get there. Then we're saying for I for key in I. Now remember, I represents this entire object, right? This entire mm -hmm. dictionary, sorry. This entire dictionary. So mm -hmm. I is this entire thing. So it's saying for the key. So, okay, we can target the key. First name, last name. And then when we do that, what we actually want to do is we wanna make our temporary string now equal what we originally had plus the key, key being um he being the first one right mm -hmm. so then, we're talking about the whole thing right the key just the first mm -hmm. key oh, and then okay. the value of that so i of key is the value at this key which in this case is michael right So I of key is the same as me saying students of first name. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then you know how that's how we target, right? We target the key. When we target the, target the key, what does it give us? It gives us our our um, it gives us our value, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're right. We did need to create this because then what happens is, so we do that for the first one because we're iterating again through i, right? So we've already done this one, but that's not the end, right? There's still another key. So then it comes back to our iteration and we come here and then we add to our temporary string, which our temporary string is now what? Temporary string is now the first key and key value, which in this case is Michael. So we're saying to that, I want to add the current key, which is last, plus the value, which would be Jordan. So therefore, then I is done, right? It prints it, then it comes back, and then I increases. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Frank? Uh, I would say like 50-50. Because, okay. yeah, so this one first loop, it just looped through the, I would say, like, the whole thing, right? This whole mm -hmm. thing. Um, yes, but but you got to think this, 
this position zero, right? Mm -hmm. This position one, two, mm -hmm. three. So it doesn't, it loops through the whole thing, but it loops through, first off, we start at zero. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it loops through this entire thing right here, right? That's all we have at position zero. So when I okay. equals zero, it's talking about this dictionary. Right. Perfect. So then we say, okay, well, I still equal to zero. I want to iterate through the keys of I, and I is what? This entire dictionary, right? It has two keys, first name. And last name. And last name. So I want to iterate through all those keys. Okay, great. Then what we have here is this temporary string. We reason we declare it outside of our for loop is because if we declared it within our for loop, it would just keep getting overwritten, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to declare it outside our for loop. And so what we're saying is, hey, it's going to be empty to an empty, it's going to be equal to an empty string at the beginning, right? Then we're saying once we iterate through this key, you grab the first key, right? So key now equals zero, right? The position of key is this guy, this first name. It's not zero, sorry. It's just the first one. Right. So we're saying, okay, now key equals first name. I'm just going to put FN for short, but it means this first name. And I, I is currently zero. So the first name of this dictionary right here. Mm -hmm. cool. Then we're saying, I want to add temporary string plus key. And then we're saying where that is the value of the key. So when we say I of key, well, what is key? Key is first name. So it's like us saying I of first name. Right? Yeah. I of first name, we know that gives us it's what? Zero. Not zero. What does it give us? If we target a key, what does it return to us? Uh, the value of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. In this case, is Michael. Mm. Perfect. So then we add that to my string. Okay. But is is this for loop done? Uh, no. There's no, another key in there. Yeah, there's another key. So then we go to the next key, which we know is this last name. Right? So now the key oh, okay. equals last name. We add that value to my temporary string. Now this for loop's done, right? We're done with this entire dictionary. Then it comes here and it prints. So it prints right. my temporary <laughs> string. Okay, I see. Yeah. So then now all we do is I iterate. So now it's one. So now it's focusing on. This one. And then we just run the same thing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I stuff. see. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does make sense. Cool. Right. Thanks. Right. Yeah, of course. Anybody else have anything? Unless you want to talk about insertion sort. Oh. Beating my head off the wall for that with that one. Um, let's see. Not really, but we'll see if we can. Yeah, I can do it another time if it's not appropriate yeah. to do it now. Yeah, I'm well, like well, ninety percent of the way there. <laughs> okay. Build an algorithm or insertion sort. Why don't you um? Hmm. I can walk through the code with you real fast. That makes better. Just what I've got so far. Or something well, I can like I, can, like, I, I have the, the answer. I can walk through. Oh, kind of what no, I, I like purposely didn't look up a way to do it. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I was I was going by the by the little animation. That's how I did the one before sure. it. And I've got it to the point where I'm iterating correctly and I'm moving okay. everything correctly. It's when mm -hmm. I go to insert it back in 
that mm. I'm out of position, but only when, like, if it moves it all the way to zero, it works fine. If sure. it's a, if it's greater than I've got it, it skips it. But when it goes to insert it back in, because I'm doing like I minus one is the position to insert temp. Like okay. when it goes to swap seven and eight, it moves eight up to where it's supposed to go, but it ends up inserting seven, one index too soon. So what if you used, so, so what are your variables? I mean, I'll just give you like some hints, but what are your variables that you're using so, with this? So you have a temp, you said. A, yeah, maybe this, this will be easier. I'm just going to pull my screen up. So I start with the, the overall index of the whole list. Okay. I pull, I pull out um, whatever index is, and I start at one. So I pull out five, and I've, I've kind of got it broken down here. So temp at index one equals five, and then I compare. I compare that, and I say, you know, if if the temp number is less than the number before it, I jump mm -hmm. into the second loop, and then I do the comparison. Here. So if temp is less than the number before it, I move it up. I move everything. I move that number up one and then I mm. kick through, you know, I kick through again. And if it doesn't, then it breaks out of the loop and starts over. Okay. On... So you're saying, yeah, I see that. Okay. What if you instead, because right now you're comparing to, you have your temp, which is the, wherever that is in the index, right? And you're saying if temp is greater than list of index minus one, which is the previous one. Yeah, well, if it's le less than, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If it's less than, great. So, What if you did some sort of I'm trying to think about without like giving away because I, I get that you don't want the answer. Hmm. What if you instead of using a for loop used something like a while loop and then you had maybe two yeah, I, conditions? Yep, yeah, I tried that. Uh, where, where was my while loop attempt? I may have pulled that out. I've done this like four different ways, but, it, and I got okay. the right, you know, it sorted it. But yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't holding that number in a temporary variable. It was bouncing it down. Oh, okay. So that's why I've tried it a couple different ways. Like I did some okay. swaps where it was inserting and then swapping it back down. Sure. Uh, so with the while loop, like I was saying, like I, I tried, you know, while the temp is less than, and then kicking it all the way up through. And that worked similar to what I've got mm -hmm. now. It was when I went to insert it back in, the iteration that I was doing was like one number off again. So I can try it again with a while loop. I can rewrite it. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you try that? And then um, maybe even after class, I can kind of, well, probably not tonight after class, but maybe you could set up like a, we can set up like a one-on-one -on -one or something and walk through that. Okay. Yeah. I just, I'll, I'll try it with a different, a different style of loop again. Yeah. And, Cause there's, and, uh, cause I'm like, I'm just, so there's close. a way to do it. Yeah. There's a way to do it. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of code. Okay. So, but that also just remembering, right. You can use an and slash or also in your, um, like conditional statements. Mm -hmm. So like if temp is less than list at, you know, IDX and greater than zero, do this. Okay. Right. Or like if there's two conditions that could be right, like if temp is less than list, blah, 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 or it's less than zero, I want you to do this. Right. So you can do an and and an or. So that just is a hint that maybe you can look at multiple things at once and make it do different things. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll keep playing with it. Yeah. Yeah. This is, and this is big stuff for, 
like a um, technical interview. I don't know that, you know, the whole joke, right, is that nobody actually has to sort in the job that technical interviews. Sorting is a really, really great one, especially in search and sort. Auto sort, search and sort, those are great things for technical interviews. So, cool. Anybody else have anything? Jordan, you said that you want to talk a little bit about random. <clears throat> yeah, um, I guess just playing with some of this stuff um, on the functions inter intermediate one, it says, it gives us an example and it says random dot random um, times 25 plus 10 returns a random floating number between 10 and 35. Okay. So on the third <laughs> example, um, random 25 plus 10. Uh, random dot random times 25 plus 10 returns a random floating number between 10 and 35. I guess no, I was just confused. A typo. But it has to be a typo. I wondered if it was a typo, but I just figured that it wasn't and stared at it for 30 minutes. Nope. I, oh, I went no. round and round with this too. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good to it's know. It's it's math order of operations because yeah, random dot random I mean. is just going to return between zero, zero and one as a float, and then it's going to take order of operations into account. So if it returns zero, zero times twenty five is zero plus ten is ten. That's yes, four. that's true. Yes, and if it's one, then it's one times twenty five uh, plus ten which is 35. So we'll return either, if it's zero, yeah, just like John said, if it's uh -huh. zero, then 25 times zero is zero. So then zero plus 10, that's our base, right? Our bottom. And then if it is one, if it's the maximum for your random, then it's one times 25. The whole, what is it? Not Pringles, what is it? Parentheses. Uh, parentheses. I don't remember what it is. So that PINDOS, PINDOS, parentheses, exponents, something, PINDOS, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. That's how the yep. order of operations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that so it does the multiplication before it does any sort of addition. Correct. Okay. That that's easy enough. Um, I I also just didn't really understand that the asterisk there was actually meant as a multiplication thing, I was thinking maybe it was like syntax for a oh. random range. No, that's how you would do if you wanted to multiply something in um, Python. That's how you would do it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Division is just like a slash. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm glad we could figure that out. Anybody else have anything? Has anybody been to Jackson, Wyoming? Has anybody, anybody been there? Jackson, Wyoming. Where the Grand Tetons are? Oh, I've not been to the Tetons yet. I'm currently there and it's pretty sweet. Sweet. Like here. Yeah. <clears throat> My job only ever took me to the really terrible parts of Wyoming. Oh, really? Unfortunately, my job did not take me here, but I have a friend who curates like events and Airbnb events for people. And somehow she, well, one of her dear friends just bought a 10 bedroom house. <laughs> so she invited yeah. my friend, like two of my friends and my wife came up later. That's, that's a good person to know. Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Hundred percent, Jeremy. That's awesome. Well, this is my first stint in Wyoming. It's pretty sweet, but there is a no mask, like all mask mandates and everything's lifted, so it's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Anybody else have anything they want to talk about? We got about ten more minutes. Today's today's um, lecture is fairly simple. It's a pretty simple lecture. Um, we're just kind of going and talking about functions. We're going to talk about that slice. So if you were looking at Rick's code, you might have wondered what those two dots minus two is, um, which is just a cool thing that we can do. Call our slice operator. It makes it really easy to do a bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about uh, 
Yeah, slice operator, dictionaries, for loops, functions, declaration, default parameters, conditional statements. And then if we have time, we're going to talk about a ternary operator. It's pretty simple. That's it. It's pretty simple today. Next week is when we go full send, though. That's when we start object-oriented programming. Also, sessions on Saturday. Yep, there's still those. Um, you, yeah, let me get that. Oh, great question. Let me figure out in Discord where that is at. I hope you guys have been liking Discord. It is new to me, so it's been interesting. Let me see. Let me figure out where the Discord channel is for that, and then uh, I will let you know. Would it be the Algos part-time channel? It's there's there's something in the project in Algos, and then there's just an Al Algos part-time channel in the project. Yeah, Algos. yeah, the that same might one? just be. No, I don't no. think so to, because it's too advanced. That's, no, yeah, that's actually so. After you take your first stack, right, then you go onto yeah. your projects and algorithms course in the same way. It's like a Python part-time. It's its own course. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's where you you learn all the fun stuff of. Oh, there's a Python algos channel. Would that be it? that? That is for full time. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see too I much. Will... <laughs> okay. I see too I know. Much. I actually, you know, what's really <laughs> funny is last Friday, two Fridays ago, when we decided to move over, it was a Friday yeah. right before Dead Week, and I um. I thought it was just my view that I was seeing. And so I started deleting stuff. It was the company server. I deleted oh, no. like 40 channels, everybody's <laughs> classes. I was like, mean? I don't teach mean. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't teach C sharp. Get out of here. <laughs> and it just ended up being everybody's, and it was not That's a good thing. Good. So, oh man, perfect. We're making it. We're making it. Does anybody else have any other questions? They anything? don't teach you how to not delete files in the boot camp, huh? No, I not, not delete other people's not. stuff. Apparently not. I don't know. I it was so bad. I was in a meeting and I that I was leaving and I was like, ah, I've got to go because um, I messed up big time. If if we have time, I I do. I'm a little bit confused on the um, GitHub, and I think that. I am still sending multiple projects into my same old repository and I don't okay. know how to like back out of there and mm -hmm. initiate a new repository to add new projects to. Did you see, did you see that uh, sheet that I sent? Did you happen to get a chance to look at that? You did say you were going to send something Yes. Yeah, put it in Discord. Okay, you put it in Discord, all right. Well, I put the, it's in our Google Drive. I'll pull it up. Um, and so let me share my screen. Let's see. Oh, let me see full screen things. Your screen. Okay, so for here, and we're looking at um, this in this helpful links. There's this new Git and GitHub cheat sheet. And so it is a full walkthrough, just kind of even what is Git, kind of trying to help understand. Basically, it's just a version control system. You can kind of think about it like if you were saving a essay, right? I don't know about you guys, but when I was in high school and college, uh, the way that I would save an essay is I'd write it and it'd be like rough draft. And then the next one was like final draft. And then the next one was like final, final draft, right? Because I had all these different versions and I would change the intro or whatever. And so what GitHub does is allows us to actually just have different versions. So if I ever mess up, I can go back to my old code. So that, that didn't break my stuff. If I wanted to have two different versions of one thing, like a one that has dark theme enabled, one that 
I don't know, tracks users for something, I can do all that. So that's kind of what Git is, just a version control system. And then GitHub is just a, a website that let us host our local repositories and, let a, let, let a, and it lets us host it to where others can either read our code or collaborate with us if we want. Um, so here's some, you know, I kind of wrote down just some common terminal com commands for you guys, right? But these are really the probably five or six that you're gonna need. Um, where it's, this is just like common for everything and then I have to get ones uh, down. But PWD, present working directory, where you're currently at, shows the path of current location. MKDIR, new folder name, just makes, make the new folder LS CD. You guys can read that. Um, and so I do also give a kind of step-by-step -step with videos plan on how to add this together. So I hope that this helps. You just, first off, you navigate to the project folder you want to initialize. Uh, you don't have to do this step. I just kind of put it's only necessary at the beginning. Once you're getting used to the terminal, um, then you can do that. Once you're really used to it and you like, oh, I know where I'm at, then you don't have to do PWD. But then you run get init on that folder, initialize the local, you get add, that adds them all. Again, this is another thing that as you get more uh, confident, you don't have to do get status. It just is there. And then you commit with some message. Then you go to your GitHub. <clears throat> and then um, just in your top left, you should see a new button. And then uh, click that, and then it should have you create a repository name. And then you click the public repository. So that should help. Is that Does that help you, Jordan? Or do you want to actually walk through it for the next five minutes? Yeah, so I, I think I've got a grasp on just about that. And it's, it's the very last steps there where um, the git remote add origin, putting that in uh -huh. there, the branch in main, push you origin main. I don't really understand what's what's happening there with those yeah. branches yeah, so, and pushes. Yeah, so what's actually happening, if I'm coming here, is we've created our repository in GitHub, right? We've created kind of like, I'm gonna have a project called project name, whatever that project is. And my computer, I have created a repository. I've initialized a repository where my project is, right? What this top line does is this git remote add origin is saying, I want to remote, right? Like not where I'm at, it's not local, it's remote. So GitHub is a remote repository holder saying, I want to connect this repository on my computer to this repository on GitHub, this specific one that says project name or you know whatever you put there you know, for project name, it will show right here, right? And saying, I want to connect to this specific, unique repository on GitHub. Okay, cool. This is the most important line, for sure. No doubt. I always say copy paste. Copy paste the top line. If that's messed up, then you're connecting your current repository with some other random repository and it can mess up and it's a pain in the butt, especially as you guys start. So make sure you just copy paste that top part. Then what you're saying is, okay, our, our repositories act like this, through this line, we start our project and it acts like this. And it can have different branches, right? Where you create different things. Then you got this middle branch. This is kind of your tried and true. Sometimes, and especially like an older thing, you might see it called master, that's what they used to call it. Now they call it main. So what you're saying is git branch main. I want to connect and push this code to main. Like I want to connect to there. And then what you're saying here, this git push you origin main is saying every time I just put git push, I want you to push it to that main branch. That's another branch to the main branch. So that's what all three of these lines are doing. It connects you to that repository sets up what your branch, your main branch is called, which we call it main. And then we just 
this is easy. So now whenever I update, I just have to add commit and just say, literally say git push. And when I say git push, it goes to main. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So if I say already master, what is the difference there? So master is what they used to uh, call it. And I think it probably is pretty ambiguous in the sense of, I don't, I don't think that they've like stopped support for that. But that's what they used to call it. So that's what, instead of, you know, back in the day, they, they changed it because this past year, because master came with um, social constructs. And so kind of built in, right? So it used to be master. Yeah. But that, that idea of, yeah, that idea of master um, has terrible origins. So they changed it to me. But they changed that within the last six months eight months so it's not like it's not like you know you'll still see master even on our website you'll still see master so it's still has support that's a very very new change okay. like everything in tech you don't always draw, adopt the most recent things well anybody else have any other questions does that explain a little bit more jordan yeah yeah thanks cool. um yeah, that course. that branch connecting to main was something i was I was a little bit hung up on, yeah. um, and and I'm, I'm talking with Jeremy too here. I think that um, one of the reasons, also potentially, that I'm going to go look into uh, that all of my pushes of different files are mm -hmm. showing up in the same repository instead of the other repositories I've created is, I think. Maybe it might have something to do with um, just the way my files are organized in a in the folder. Like my full, I have one folder that I've assigned as my origin. Oh yeah, and then there's everything within that folder. And and, and yeah, because it's just yeah, like, and that's okay. But so if you have multiple projects, you just can't you can't have multiple remotes. If that makes sense. Yeah. So like you can't have a remote within a remote. That won't work. But it. Yeah, I think that's totally fine to have like a Python folder and then you have like a Django folder and then you just push everything. It's really you just have to initialize one time you just get push. You add commit and push. That's totally fine. Okay. Yeah, you see that all, all the time. And in fact, our, our Java teacher does that exact thing. He sets up all the assignments and everything and then you just connect once and then you get push. Yeah, it's totally fine. So totally fine. would you, um, I think you've already said this before, but I'm just clarifying. Yeah. Um, would you consider the GitHub repository that you make on your GitHub account uh -huh. more of the folder system, the repository for just one project? as opposed to like, is it good practice just for every individual project you do, as long as it doesn't same, like fall under the same umbrella um, to go ahead and create new repositories on your GitHub? Um, I think that's a very just personal okay. opinion. Um, like it's totally fine to have one Python folder and have everything. I personally, this, this sounds silly, but if a recruiter, because recruiters don't know anything about tech, right? Uh, they just they just are like, I'm going to hire people. And so if a recruiter sees, and this is, again, fully personal opinion. This is not according to Dojo's opinion or anybody other than mine. But if a recruiter sees, you know, if I, if I look and I have six pages of projects, that just to a recruiter who doesn't understand, that might look like, oh, he codes a lot more than somebody with four projects. Although those four projects are big and right, like have tons of projects within that. Just the fact that there's, so like if you were to go to my GitHub, let's say I went like here and I go to this GitHub, right? And you go to my profile, your profile, right? And then I have 81 repositories. That 81 is like, if you, if you just have a Python, but you have 50 assignments in there, I believe it still just counts as one repository. Sure. Okay. So they're like, and oh, so, this guy doesn't do anything. Yeah. This guy only has four, you know, out of this whole boot camp, he has four repositories. Although one is web fundamentals. If you did 
Python, Mern, Java right. projects, right? Like, but then it still just sees it as that. So I personally like creating one for each only because of that, only because of if somebody sees this, but then there's also like the contribution. So that's another thing that they see like, oh, he contributed, he did some stuff, but that repositories thing makes it look like, uh, you know, if they click on my repositories, I just now have pages and pages of things that I've written, you know, versus, right. It looks more flushed out. Yeah. It looks like, oh, he's written a lot of code. He goes all the time. <laughs> it's versus the other thing, right? That's what I would say. Cool. All right, friends. Um, give me one second. I got 